Good evening. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus. A few announcements for you. One is in addition to our prayers, we include Deaconess Watson. She's been battling what seems to be a gallbladder problem, and I just had word that she was up to the hospital to get some fluids back in her. So hopefully um, they're helping get, bring her some uh, relief. Also, a um, reminder, if you'd please stick around after the service, we have our Sunday school soup supper going on, a chance to sample all kinds of, of different soups and uh, give to a good cause. With the, the money will be going towards new Bibles for our classrooms. Um, and a reminder, we're in the Lenten season, so we have our, our Wednesday Vespers services. Unfortunately, I had to cancel last Wednesday because of the weather, but... Uh, hopefully be able to have it this week. And uh, what that means for midweek classes is, is come for the 5.30 Vespers service. We'll have class from 6 to 7 and then finish up at 7 o'clock. And uh, also, youth, remember opportunity to be part of the, uh, the plant sale by getting started with planting seeds. And again, Sunday from 2 to 3 in the fellowship hall doing some planting. And for all of us, remember next weekend, we get to change our clocks with daylight saving time beginning. I think I'll let you read the rest of those on your own. We're following uh, Divine Service setting three this evening, and we have our opening hymn number 685.
please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. And then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. 
I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. 
because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. <coughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And he called to him the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. together in confessing our faith with the Nicene Creed. seated we continue with our hymn of the day number 708 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that speaks to us this evening is from our gospel lesson. Well, Peter spoke the truth quite clearly and without hesitation when Jesus asked his disciples who people thought that he was. And Peter said, well, you are the Christ. He spoke it quite plainly. And yet Peter and the rest of the disciples, they, they were not yet ready for just what this confession meant. And truth be told, neither are we. For Jesus to be the Christ, to, to be the Messiah, the Savior that has been promised to this world from the day that Adam and Eve fell into sin, for him to be that Savior, he was going to have to travel a very lonely and painful road. He would need to travel the lonely way to the cross. And this, of course, is all by God's design and intention. For in God's perfect justice, there absolutely must be payment made for each and every sin. And yet in God's perfect love, he desires for all sinners to be saved. So the only solution could be that there would be one who could be found to be the single sacrifice for the sins of everyone, for the sins of, of all sinners of all times. And the only one who could be this sacrifice would have to be God's perfect sinless son. So Jesus teaches his disciples this day. He says, the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. The lonely way of betrayal and rejection, the lonely way of suffering, death, and the grave is what was necessary necessary for Jesus to be the Christ, the anointed Savior of this world. Now this does not sit very well with Peter. For Peter and the rest of the disciples, they were looking ahead to being able to, to bask with Jesus in some kind of worldly glory. They had been waiting patiently for three years now of being laughed at and rejected by the religious establishment of the day they were ready to be vindicated. They desperately wanted Jesus to prove all of these people to be wrong as he would assert himself as this new king who had come in power to forcefully set things right in this world. So Peter pulls Jesus aside and he rebukes him for daring to speak of such a, a lonely, degrading way to be the Messiah. Jesus, though, looks at Peter and the rest of the apostles here and he rebukes this way of thinking as he says, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind on the things of God not set in your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. You see, keeping Jesus from the cross is a satanic idea. And uh, avoiding suffering, that is the way of the world, but it is not the way of God. For God meets suffering head on at the cross, and in so doing, he defeats Satan. Well, Jesus then, after rebuking Peter and, and the rest of the disciples, as if to make matters worse, he calls together the rest of the crowd there to teach all of them that this lonely way of suffering would not only apply to him, but to any who would wish to follow after him. See, Jesus, he didn't come to go this, this lonely way of the cross so that his, his followers could have an, an easy, pain-free life here in this world. No, he came so that his, his followers could rather have, have true life together with him and with his heavenly Father. You see, the goal, it isn't friendship with this world, but a loving relationship with our heavenly Father. And the only way for us to enter into and to stay in this loving relationship is for us to forsake friendship with this world 
in favor of friendship with God through the forgiveness of our sins, earned by our Savior through his lonely suffering and rejection and death and resurrection. But like Peter, like Peter, we are afraid. We are afraid of this call from Jesus to be separate from this world. We're afraid of this call because we think it's a call to loneliness and we're all afraid of being alone. We're afraid that being with God means being separated from and isolated from others. You see, we want friendships. We want others to like us. Even if it's friends and likes on Facebook, we would rather hide from God and, and disobey him than to lose one friend here on earth. For the human relationship to us becomes paramount. Nothing must come between us and our, and our human relationships, not even sometimes the truth. You ask yourself, when you see a friend falling into sin, maybe even sinning against you, are you tempted to never speak of it? Oftentimes our thought process is don't dare to speak of that because I don't want to lose the friendship and the relationship because I'm afraid, actually, of being alone. Or as your family member maybe quit coming to church, well, don't dare talk about it to him or her for fear of losing that friendship and your opportunity to be together, at least at Thanksgiving and Christmas. We fear being alone so much so that we would rather be hiding with Adam and Eve in the garden, hiding from God rather than being with the one who is able to bring us into true relationship and true love. And true love is found only in the one who did not fear being alone, even forsaken by God himself. Jesus was deserted, deserted by his closest disciples. And he went alone to the cross where even his father would turn his back on him. Completely alone with the weight of the sins of the entire world upon him. That's how Jesus died. And because Jesus died such a lonely death for you, you need not fear ever being alone, even if it means you going through the valley of the shadow of death. Because Jesus is the one who has, who has traveled that path already, and he has come back from the depths of the grave itself to be with you forever. You, though, you will continually try to, to hide and, and run from him, to turn your back on him, even, even to push him away at times, but he, he will not quit pursuing you. Like God finding Adam and Eve hiding in the garden. Or like Jesus finding his disciples hiding behind locked doors after his crucifixion. So God continues to pursue you. He calls you and he gathers you into a relationship with him. And although his call may mean at times walking away from worldly things, maybe even breaking off some worldly relationships. It is not a call to loneliness and isolation. No, his call is a call into true relationship, into true love. And he calls you and he gathers you, not just into a solitary relationship with him alone, but into a true relationship with all believers, into the holy Christian church. For without Christ, we are separated from God. Without Christ, we are at war with God. Without Christ, there will always be only discord between us and our fellow man. But with Christ, with Christ, we are at peace with God by the forgiveness of our sins. And with Christ, we can maintain true friendships and, and true relationships of, of love with our fellow sinners because we now have the love and the forgiveness of Christ to share with them. The Holy Christian Church, it may not look like much, and it certainly 
doesn't look like a whole lot in comparison to the attractive things of relationships within this world. But when you see it through the eyes of, of faith, the eyes of faith that, that always see Christ, the image of him who went alone to the cross for you, then you see what true love and true relationship is. And sinners can't be any closer to one another than when they stand shoulder to shoulder confessing themselves to be miserable sinners before their heavenly father. And although so-called blood relationships seem to be the tightest there, there is nothing tighter, though, than the, than the blood relationship that we have with our brothers and our sisters in Christ because it is the blood of Christ that has caused our watery rebirth into his family. And although hanging out with friends, say, at a restaurant or around your, your backyard grill seems to be just what you need to cure your loneliness, it's only the meal prepared by your Savior, where he is both the host and the feast that brings you into true unity and true relationship. So do you want to enjoy a, a meal together with loved ones where there is no division? And then go. Go and, and be reconciled. Be reconciled with those who have sinned against you and those you have, have sinned against. Confess before your heavenly Father your unworthiness and then come together often, often with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to be reconciled together and to recline together at his table. For as a child of God in Christ Jesus, you need never fear being alone because he keeps his promise to never leave you and to never forsake you. And when you are with Jesus, you are also with your eternal family that will eat together that eternal meal of that feast that has been prepared for you by the lonely sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. Will you please rise? Now may the peace of God, which surpasses our understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Seated, we now receive the offering.
please rise. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. With all boldness and confidence, we pray to our Heavenly Father for our Christian lives that our Savior rebuke us when necessary, put Satan behind him, set our minds on the things of God, and enable us to deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For boldness to confess Jesus as the Christ, that the Holy Spirit teach us who Jesus is, Prepare us to suffer for the faith as our Father wills, and grant us steadfastness, and fill us with rejoicing when we have the privilege of being persecuted for the Messiah. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer, especially those being persecuted for their faith, and for those who have little to live on, and those who are without homes, that our Heavenly Father provide for their needs and strengthen their faith to endure unto the hope that does not disappoint because of the reconciliation earned for all sinners through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick and those who are grieving, for those who are dying and those who are injured, including Myra, Verlene, and Elizabeth in their time of illness, and for those who mourn the loss of Charles, that they be granted faith in Jesus, patience through their afflictions, relief from their sorrows, and the assurance that suffering leads to a hope that does not disappoint. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who celebrate their wedding anniversary, Randy and Becky, Richard and Deb and Jeff and Janet, keep them steadfast in their commitment to love each other, to work together, to face the troubles of the world strengthened by one another, and to find joy in each other's companionship until death parts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who, like Sarah, desire but have not been granted children, that our gracious God comfort them with his promises, provide them with patience, and if it is his will, grant them the desire of their heart as he did for Sarah. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the government, that those to whom God has entrusted civil authority use it as he intended, defending life, upholding the rule of law, preserving rights, and working for the good of all people, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who live without faith in Christ, that the Holy Spirit empower the church and each of his people to speak boldly the message that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us and reconciled us to God. We ask that you turn unbelieving hearts to trust that Jesus has saved us from the wrath of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.